When we say the term thought partner, do we sometimes mean thought confirmer? Here's what I mean by that. When I first applied for an assistant principal position, uh, I remember going into the interview and I was really excited, did a lot of research on the school that I had the opportunity to represent as their assistant principal. And when I got in the interview, the principal and I, who was hiring for the position, him and I actually got into an argument right in the interview. It was such a strange experience for me. And we kind of went back and forth, totally disagreed on some things. And I left there and thought, this was the worst interview I've ever had. So about one to two days later, I actually remember getting a phone call from this principal and I was expecting the, the conversation to be around why I didn't get the job and whatever. And surprisingly, he actually hired me. And the reason he hired me was because I did challenge him because he wanted someone to push back. And I remember him saying to me, I don't need someone who thinks like me. I need someone who challenges me. But at the end of the day, I do have to make the final decision because as a principal, if we do something wrong as a school, it's going to be my responsibility. So you need to back me up, even if we disagree before, but never let me go out there disagreeing with a, a, an idea that I'm about to share and not telling me beforehand. And that is something that's really important to me because when I became a principal, that was the first person I looked for, someone who would challenge me, who would push back because I already know what I think, but I need someone with you know different viewpoints, different experiences to push back. And one of the things that I'm really adamant about, it's not about your idea or my idea, it's about the best idea and how do we actually find that. So if you're looking for a true thought partner, it's someone who pushes and challenges you to find that best solution. But sometimes we really mean a thought confirmer. I'm gonna say something, I just need you to agree with me. And as much as that might feel good, it doesn't really help anyone moving forward. I thought about all of this as I was interviewing Dr. Ryan Daniel, and she is an amazing principal and so blessed to have her on the, uh, as a contributor to the What Makes a Great Principal book. It, it, absolutely brilliant mind she has a lot of different experiences and as i was talking to her that's where this really kind of came home is this idea of being a, a thought partner versus a thought confirmer and she talks about in this podcast how she kind of created a space where people would challenge her to actually do what's best for her school and for her students you're gonna love this podcast i feel so blessed to have talked to dr ryan daniel to have her as part of what makes great principal you're going to love this, whether you're a teacher, administrator, aspiring to do that. She's really going to push your thinking. I absolutely love talking to her. You're going to love this podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey, everyone. It's George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed to have one of the contributors to What Makes a Great Principal, uh, Dr. Ryan Daniel. And I just spent, you no know, 10, 15 minutes on the Three Questions podcast and Dr. Daniel just blew me away. So I'm gonna tell you right now, you, this is gonna be tough to top what you just did because that was awesome. So I loved it. So if you didn't see that episode, make sure that you check that out. Uh, but Dr. Daniel is actually uh, a principal currently, uh, you know, has been in many different roles, wrote one of the, one of the chapters. And I, I love this, you actually, um, you actually are in the same district. I don't know. You're not in the same school though, right? Same district. Not, not the same school, but the same district that I was a student in. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so cool. And one of the things I really love when we were talking about this, and I always kind of like pregame before we get on here, um, just how important it is, you know, that you do the role of principal, but also you're a mom, you're a person. And this is kind of, like, I feel like, you know, you're really good at it at a principal, but it's kind of a little secondary, right? It's because I think sometimes we like that becomes, who we are, but like, I kind of like, I, I see you as a mom because that's how you like, you know, told me about yourself and we kind of like our careers become us. And I think that's not a good place to be and maybe not the best example. So I just love that you really focus on how important it is for you as a mom. But instead of me introducing you, I'd love for you to everyone to tell uh, who you are, what you do today and how you got there. All right. Hey friends. Uh, my name is Dr. Ryan Daniel. I am a proud principal elementary. I am all things elementary. I love little people, love little people. <laughs> I am a mom. I have two, uh, two girls and they are truly the just light of my life. Um, they actually attend school with me. So, you know, for me, I wanted to build a culture that I wanted my mm -hmm. own children to experience. And, you know, that's something rare 
a lot of school leaders not always have, they don't always have their children with them at, at school. So, you know, it definitely, I struggle with balance for, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I do the best that I can. And um, I'm just really excited. This is my 18th year in education, eighth year as a principal. I'm on my second school. So I had the opportunity to like be a first year principal again um, to do it better <laughs> the second right. time. Um, so just excited to be here today. Do you, you know, I don't know if you know this term and uh, it's actually called dog fooding. Have you ever heard this term before? Dog oh, fooding? Like, you kind of referenced it and you, I don't even think you know it, but now I got, now you got a, a name for it. So dog fooding is when you own a restaurant, but you wouldn't eat there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's actually like an interest, like, it's like, you'll give that food to someone else, but you're not eating it. Right. right. And so I yeah. love, I love that you talked about this, that your own kids attend your school because it's not always the case. Right. And I think that that's a really important aspect. So how does that, how does that kind of shape some of the things that you like, and obviously, you know, like, I think it's really important because I say this, you know, if, if, if I wouldn't put my kids in your class, I wouldn't put any kids in your class. Right. That that's a really important thing. So how does that kind of shape some of the thinking about behind your work? I, I, you know, it definitely gives me points with the parents because they're like, Oh wait, you have, you know, your right. children here. So you really must believe in the school and, and the, the teachers. Um, it does give some mm -hmm. pride to my teachers, but it also gives some anxiety too. Right. Um, because of course you got your the principal's daughter is in, is in your class. Um, but you know, I definitely think it has shaped me, my thinking mm -hmm. and everyone else. I remember one time, uh, one of my daughters, she was receiving some services and I noticed that the service provider was prioritizing her over mm -hmm. the other students on her case. And she's like, well, don't you worry. I'm going to get to, I said, Oh, well, wait a minute. If you're not going to make those same provisions for right. everyone, then this isn't the right school for you. Um, and you know, it made everyone understand like the, yep. like, I want the same for every child, you know, no matter if their last name is Daniel or not. Like when mm. I tell people that this is the best school ever, like I mean it, but I don't want to be lying to people when I say, no, it's only the best school for my children, you know, not yours. I'm like curious because so sometimes when we have our own kids in our school, we're a little bit harder on them. Do you ever, do you ever? <laughs> you must have been in my office this morning with my <laughs> second grader because she said that she's like, well, you said good morning to everybody, but you're not, I'm like, okay, you're right. I am sorry. <laughs> but very, you know, just, but the thing is, right. they know that. And right. you know, I have those conversations with them. They also, it also challenges me to be a better mom, to be a better yeah. principal, because sometimes they have to say, hey, but if you did the investigation for that child, why aren't you doing it for me? Right. Or if, and, you know, it has caused me to kind of take a take a step back a little bit. So we've had to put boundaries in place so that we understand. And I do the same thing with my teachers. Like, hey, I'm coming to you as a mom, not the principal right now. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to ah. you as a principal. Um, and and I have those conversations um, with them. My oldest, she's in the second grade, so she's been here for three years. And I make sure that the teacher that she, they, she had before kind of talks to her new teacher mm -hmm. to just reassure them that, like, no, when she when she's in parent mode, she's in parent mode. When she's in principal mode, she's in principal mode. She does really well to try not to like blur the mm -hmm. line. I, uh, I had I had to ask. I had to it's ask. It's like, hard though. It is uh, hard. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because I there's sometimes when I'm talking, I'm like, okay, this is this is George the dad talking right now. Yeah. Like, and I make sure that that yeah. is like distinguished, and there, you know, it's a different. There's a there's a sometimes an, a a different emotional level that I have when it's George the dad speaking, and I was like, and then sometimes it's like, okay, now I'm mad, so it's George the dad. Yes. Yes. Right? That happened. So like, hey, this is like now I'm like this is George the dad. Now I'm talking, you know. Not only for my kid, but all kids, but this is something that I kind of think about. So I love this. So one of the things that you talked about um, in the book was when you started, you were an assistant principal and then you became a principal with no assistant principal. So, you know, and that's super, super challenging. And, uh, you, you know, like in the school district that I was, when I was principal, I was blessed to have an assistant principal. And then I, there were some schools that the population wasn't yeah. high enough to actually have an assistant principal based on budgeting. 
but it wasn't like, well, that's cool. You still have to do all the same paperwork. You still have, and so it was like kind of double the work. So like, what's some of the challenges that you've had kind of being in that role without, you know, an admin and how, maybe what are some of the ways that you've actually kind of, and you kind of talk about this a little bit in the book, like what are some of the ways that you kind of circumvent that to, even though you don't have a formal assistant principal, how do you tap into leadership in your school? Um, just that I have to tap into the leaders, the silent leaders, the loud leaders, um, the ones that, you know, can generate a crowd. You know, I, I what you miss um, and what I've missed is there's no thought partner in mm -hmm. the work and in the seat that understands the role. Like there's no other administrator that's in the building with me that like we can think and unpack it through. Yeah. Um, but what I've done over the years is built up a team around me of what I need. And it took a while to get that though, because I also am very stubborn and independent. And, um, you know, my team loves to remind me sometimes of that, but you know, you need those people, right. you know, right. you need those people yeah. there. Like, you don't have to do all of the things by yourself. And, and I'm like, yes, I do, because I'm the principal. And I'm like, right. but we're here to help you. Hmm. Um, so what I've done um, is found the people that um, fill the void that I have in, like, my leadership tool belt. So, and I make them, they are the, the, the COO of whatever that is. So, for example, I have a math lead, and she is the COO of math. I don't try to... Under, I go to her for the questions. I don't try to figure it out myself. If I have a question about something with the math curriculum or what our math teacher should be doing or what we should do, I go to her. Because if I gave her the autonomy to run the math program, then I have to trust that she is, um, yeah. you know, she has all of the information and things that I need. So I've, I've tried to build up people around me that we work as one. And we work as a team because I dream really big. I, I shoot for the moon. Um, I'm very much of a futuristic person. And they're like, okay, come on down. Like, this is what we need to do first to get to the mountaintop. Um, and so, like, you need those people to kind of push and question yeah. and um, and not yes men. I don't, I, don't have a, I don't have any yes men on my team. Maybe one who's like, okay, it's all right. We can do that. <laughs> And then, but she, she's the one that kind of makes me feel validated right. and seen. And then the rest of them start coming and be, and they're, the <laughs> and they're like, nope, this is when it needs to happen. But you just have to trust and right. build the team. You have to. I think that's the only way that if you're ever in this single administrator, single principal role, like you have to build a team and understand that, like, you're the principal, but you don't, you know, you can't run the building by yourself. You know, so it's, it's interesting because you use the term thought partner and a lot of people would use that term, but the way you're talking about is actually legitimate where some people it's like a thought confirmer. That's what they're actually looking for. Yeah. They're just looking for <laughs> someone to say, I'm going to say this thing. Just tell me I'm right. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and then I'll feel good. Um, I was very influenced when I became an assistant principal by the the person who was my principal and i don't know if you read about this but uh i actually got in a fight in the interview with the person who was uh, who was hiring me who like i got in a fight and i was like what is going on here and him and i were just going at each other and then he hired me and he said the reason i hired you is you're the only one who pushed back and i needed i need someone who challenged me and here's at the end of the day, and I think this is a really important thing he said to me, when, when we go out there, like you can push back all you want, but I actually have to make, always have to make the final decision because like, it's going to be on me, right? So you're not getting in trouble. If something goes wrong, I am. So I have to go with kind of, you know, what I feel you got to back me up then. And so like, whether we disagree or not, like do that before, don't do it after and don't do it during. So like once, once I make a decision, we got to, got to go that way, but we would be, we had such a good relationship. You could hear us like yelling at each other. And then we come out laughing because that's what he, and so the, the first person I hired when I became a principal was a teacher who always challenged me at that school. And she pushed back on everything. I'm like, that's who I want. I need someone who does that same thing. And I, you know, and I always say, I, I didn't need another George, right? Yeah. I already got the George. That's me. 
I need someone who thinks different, you know, is actually, um, you know, maybe has different qualities that will appeal to people that I don't. And I think that's really, so I love that you, it's actually thought partners, not thought confirmers, because that is a very different, you know, uh, mentality. So the last question I want to ask you is just about writing this chapter and that experience and how it was for you and uh, maybe what you learned from it. So like when you wrote a chapter for, for what makes a great principal, how was that? Like, how, how did you like that process? You know, what did you learn, you know, through writing through that? I'm like, I love, it's one, one of my favorite things to do is write. It actually makes me, I think way smarter because I'm like, okay, I got anyone can read this. So I, I better really think about what I'm sharing. Right. So like, how was that process for you? I think just that, like, I, I think I kept rereading and saying, okay, like, well, I don't understand what this acronym is, but with somebody else or yeah. am I, am I clear? Um, because sometimes I, you know, I will second guess because I can be very quick with the mouth sometimes and <laughs> making sure making sure that, OK, what was the intent, the intent versus impact? Um, and, and I think that that is something that um, challenged me in the process, in the writing process. Like, what was my intent of a sentence versus what the impact it would be on the reader? What was my intent of this? paragraph or this moment this reflection like what's the lesson that I want to with people to get and because I think I think great books great chapters great mm -hmm. stories they have lessons but yeah. sometimes it's not the lessons that say hey this is the lesson I want you to learn but it's the it's the one that makes you go oh. <laughs> right right that's what I, I wanted those moments yeah. I wanted to, ah, like mm. and I wanted it to I wanted it to make people kind of pause um, for a moment and just reflect on their journey and the letting go of the expectation. Um, I struggled in the beginning of writing because I I went into the the place of um, imposter syndrome. Like, do I have enough to say to people? Like, who else is going to be in the book? I don't have books and books, you know, and a library filled with my name of books that I've written. And so I think in the process, um, I let go of my imposter syndrome. And and I told myself, hey, you have a story to teach people, you know, a right. lesson that somebody can learn from your experience, your moment, you know, so so make it count, get to the point and make it count. Well, like now, if you're feeling like you have nothing to say, man, I feel way worse after talking. <laughs> I'm like, if you feel that I must suck, like, oh my God, because you're like, I'm blown away just talking to you about your chapter. This is going to be the worst analogy ever. But when you said about one of the things, I don't know if you saw the Barbie movie. <laughs> it's like, this is already starting off bad. It's okay, go for it. So the Barbie movie, if you talk to people about it, I'm like, what was your like takeaway from the movie? And everyone had something different. And I think that's like actually like a really good movie. And that's kind of, you know, like what you're aiming for is that you like you like people see themselves in different ways in what you're writing and then they find their own thing like one of the things i wrote about i know i was like terrible analogy and you know people are like seriously does that you wrote up the barbie movie <laughs> but the, the the thing that i always talk about is we always we share about personalized learning and education but all learning is personalized because mm -hmm. people walk into a room they have totally different um knowledge they have totally different experiences they have totally different wants and so basically it's about people making their own connections. But when you just kind of tell people the story and the lesson, you kind of take away that experience from them, right? It's like, this is what you should learn. It's like, well, no, that's not really how it works. Like I have different experiences of coming in here and, you know, I'll take away my own things. But I think that you did a great job of this. And so you actually, you did it. You taught the other one too. So like, I'm like, Allison was so right about you. And she was like, I'm so excited to have met you. I love talking to you. I think we should host a show together moving Come forward. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I also, I was going to stop you because I'm like, I know you don't got a, a library of books. Yeah, it is coming. Coming, it's coming. It's, it's coming, right? So, hey, everyone, make sure you follow, follow uh, Ryan, Dr. Ryan Daniel. Uh, all the socials are, are down below. It was, uh, it was amazing to meet you. I am like so excited you're about which I feel horrible for saying because you already wrote for this book and this is the first time I met you. I know, no, it's fine. Listen, sometimes we 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 meet the people in the moment that we need to meet them, and yeah. I, like this this was the moment. This was the moment that we <laughs> I'll take it to meet each other to to affirm some of the things that I know for me 
that I was already feeling and thinking. You're crushing it. I love it. So I'm already going to do the intro on thought confirmer versus thought partner. Already, That's what the intro is going to be about. It's going to be in the title. So I, I love it. So Dr. Daniel, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. What a blessing to have you here today. Thanks for taking, thanks for being here. Take care.